Okay, now we're going to convert rectangular equations into polar. So this wants us to convert it, and then it says solve for r. Okay, so here's the original problem. We have x squared plus y squared equals x. Now the idea here is you want to look at the formulas. These are the same ones that we derived in the beginning of this section. We're going to use the same ones, and we're going to see what can we plug into here in order to change the x's and y's all over into r's and thetas. That's what we want to get. If we want to turn it into a polar equation, we want only r's and thetas left over. Okay, so here's one substitution, x squared plus y squared. That definition, that's r squared. So I'm going to put an r squared in uh, on the left-hand side of that equation. All this here can be replaced with r squared. Then we're going to replace the x. Now the x, we have this uh, definition here, x is equal to r cosine. So replace the x. Instead, we're going to write r cosine theta. Now to solve for r, what we have to do here is we need to set it equal to zero. Uh, so when we do that, I'm going to bring one of these terms over across the equal sign, probably easier to bring the r cosine over, and we get r squared minus r cosine theta equals zero. And then from there, we can factor it out in r. And we get, uh, from this, we get r minus cosine theta. So whenever you have something set equal to zero, it's good to do factoring. And then you can set both of them equal to zero and get the answer. Now, first one, if we set that equal to zero, we get r is equal to zero. And if we take this one and set it equal to zero, we're going to get r equals cosine theta. Now, this one, the r equals zero, we're actually going to ignore that answer. Now, even though that is an answer, r equals zero, what is that? It's that. It's a dot. All it is, it's basically a circle with the radius of zero, and if you have a radius of zero, you don't really have any equation at all. You just have a dot. So we're actually going to not count that answer. We're not going to use that one. We're only going to use this one here. Our cosine theta is going to be the answer. So what you might be thinking is, well, couldn't I just take this equation here and just divide both sides by r? Wouldn't I get exactly the same answer? Yes, that's correct. You would get the same answer if you do that, but that's mathematically not the correct procedure. The reason why is because if you take this equation right here and divide both sides by r, it's possible that you might be actually dividing by zero. In fact, we actually found that r is equal to zero here, so technically that's not correct. If you're dividing both sides by r, you're actually dividing something by zero, which is undefined. So therefore, that's not the correct procedure. Even though you will get the same answer as this, mathematically, it's not correct. The correct way of doing it is you take this, you bring it across the equal sign like we did here, factor out the r, and then set both of them equal to zero. And again, if you get anytime you get r equals zero when you're solving these, you can go ahead and ignore that answer. So the only answer that we're going to write here uh, is r equals cosine theta. Okay, part B. Again, the idea here is you want to get rid of the x's and y's and replace it with r's and thetas. You look for the formulas here, what you can pl plug into each of these to get rid of the x and the y. And we have these two formulas here, x is r cosine and y is r sine. I'm going to substitute those both in uh, for each thing here. So I have 4 instead of the x, I'm going to put in 4 cosine theta, that's squared. And then the y is going to be r sine theta. So I'm putting that in, replacing the x and the y, and now I have r's and thetas. So I want to solve this for r, so I need to distribute the square, that's going to be 4 r squared cosine squared theta, and then I still have r sine theta over here equals 1. Now I need to get the r's together, so I can uh, combine those together, r squared times an r, you'll get r cubed, so 4 r cubed, and then we have cosine squared theta sine theta equals 1. I want to solve this for r cubed. I want to get that by itself. So what I need to do here is a division step. I'm going to divide both sides by 4 cosine squared sine theta. I want to get r cubed by itself. So when I do that, I get 1 over 4 cosine squared theta and then sine theta. That's what I get when I divide both sides by 4 cosine squared sine theta, I want to get the r cubed by itself. Now we're not done yet because we're going to get r by itself. What you want to do is take the cube root of both sides. So I'm going to do cube root of this side and I'm going to do cube root of that side. So when I do that, I get r by itself. Now I don't have to worry about doing plus or minus here because I'm taking the odd root of something. So r is equal to just the positive cube root. I have 1 over 4 cosine squared theta and sine theta. 
Now, could I do any more with this? Yes, now technically this is actually okay. This is fine because you have it in, this is in, in uh, a polar equation because you have basically just an R and a theta left over we solve for R. The only other thing you could do for this one is you could put some identities in for that. So the way you would do that is you can make this 1 fourth times 1 over cosine squared times 1 over sine theta. We're just going to actually separate that into three different equations. You are able to do that because everything is all multiplication. If I multiply all that back out, I get the same thing I started with. And the only reason why I want to separate this is because now I can actually throw in some identities for each one. Uh, so I have one fourth, I have secant squared in there for one over cosine squared, and I have cosecant in there for the uh, one over y, or one over sine. So I just put in identities for all that. And this would be as far as you can go. So again, this one right here, it's a Q root. So Q root one quarter secant squared times cosecant, that would be as far as you can go if you wanted to put in identities. Otherwise, it uh, depends on the, uh, the teacher or the homework program you're using. This answer might be acceptable, but using identities, you'd be able to write as this. Okay, now for part C. Again, what you always begin with is what can you put in for each one? I can't use this first equation because I need to have x squared and y squared together. So I'm just going to look at these two again. So the y squared, I'm going to put in an r sine theta in place of the y. Don't forget that that's going to be squared. And then we have 2 times x. x is going to be r cosine theta. And now we just want to solve this one uh, for r. We square both of these inside. So r squared sine squared theta equals 2r cosine theta. And as I mentioned in a previous video, if you, or previous uh, part, uh, if you want to solve for this, you don't want to divide everything through by r, that's, that's the incorrect procedure. You want to subtract and set it equal to zero to be mathematically correct. So r squared sine squared theta minus 2r cosine theta equals zero. And then that, the purpose for setting equal to zero is because now you can factor on r, set both of them equal to zero, get the answer. The factor on r, I get r sine squared theta minus 2 cosine theta equals zero. And normally you would set both of them equal to zero. As I mentioned before uh, in a previous part, if you set r equal to zero, that means that uh, that's just going to have a point. So we're not going to actually include that answer. I'm only going to look at the one inside the parentheses. So I want to take, uh, when I solve it over here, I get r sine squared theta minus 2 cosine theta. That's the one only that I want to set equal to uh, zero. So when I do that, I'm going to add the 2 cosine over, and I get this. And then I want to divide both sides by sine squared because I want to solve for r. So r is equal to 2 cosine theta over sine squared theta, and I get this. So uh, depending on, again, the teacher and the program you're using, this might be actually acceptable because this is going to be in terms of a polar equation, but maybe your teacher might, may want you to take that down a little bit further using identities. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and separate this uh, as 2 over 1, and then... Uh, I have cosine theta. Now, uh, sine squared can be written as sine times sine, so I'm going to actually split this up and write it this way. I'm going to write it as sine times sine. Now, sine times sine would give you the sine squared, and if you multiply 2 times cosine, you definitely would get that. So I'm not changing the problem, I'm just separating it, um, because multiplication we are allowed to uh, regroup and uh, take things apart like we did here. Then, each of these I can put an identity for, so this is going to be 2 Cosine over sine is going to be our cotangent. 1 over sine is going to be cosecant. So this would be the way you could write that by uh, using identities. And so therefore, this right here, this would be the equivalent uh, equation to go along with this one. This is rectangular, and this is going to be polar.